Hi everyone. <clears throat> welcome to the Zoom Technologies. Welcome to the Microsoft Azure session. So today we are discussing about Microsoft Azure. What is Microsoft Azure? Microsoft Azure is a cloud service. Microsoft Azure is a cloud service. By the help of this Microsoft Azure service, we can access Microsoft data center resources. So if you want to access Microsoft data center resources like Microsoft servers, services, web service, <clears throat> load balancers, storage. If you want to access, we require Microsoft Azure service. So first we'll discuss about this Microsoft Azure certification. So Microsoft Azure is a cloud-based service and Microsoft has given some certification. After completing this Microsoft Azure service, you can say yourself as a, a Microsoft Azure administrator. So joining to any organization, you can write in your profile, I'm a Microsoft Azure administrator. And Microsoft has given some certifications here. We'll talk about the first certifications here. So we have a certification path here, Microsoft Azure certification path. First, we have a fundamental AZ900. It's a basics. Basics of Azure you're going to learn here. Okay, fundamentals. Then after that, if you want to become Microsoft Azure administrator, right, you have to write AZ103 certification. So there are three popular certifications we have, which is given by Microsoft. The first one, is what here az103 if you write az103 you will become microsoft certified azure associate administrator okay then after that you can you can plan for the next certification which is given by microsoft az203 and az203 is designed for developers if you are the software developers right if you are the software developer you're designing testing your applications you can go for az103 <laughs> Then the third one Microsoft has given that is called what here? Azure Architect certification. In this, we have to write two papers, AZ300, AZ103. <clears throat> so you will become Microsoft Azure Architect. Now, what is the job of Microsoft Azure Architect? Microsoft Azure Architect will give the best solution to the companies, best practice, best designing to the companies. Now, AZ203, developing solutions of microsoft azure so these guys are developing the new application testing their application in the over the internet there this is what developers here but if you're saying after you're completing mcac course after completing your ccna course you're saying you are the system administrator or you are the network administrator right so maybe your platform is windows or non-windows so then you have to do this course that is microsoft az 103 if you do this microsoft az 103 your job is what Microsoft administrator. So what is the job of Microsoft Azure administrator? The Azure administrator job is what? Deploying, configuring, designing, implementing the new servers in the cloud. Like after completing MCSC course, we can say ourselves as system admin. The job of system admin is what? Designing, deploying the new servers, managing the network, users, user account, user data, user services, web servers, <clears throat> load balancers in our network. The same thing right now we are not creating our network in on-premises we are creating this network in the cloud right we are creating this network in the cloud if you want to create your network in the cloud so you have to do microsoft azure administrator so if you do this course 103 you can say you are the microsoft azure administrator now in this course <clears throat> in microsoft azure administration course we are going to learn here now uh, the current paper name is AZ103, but Microsoft is now is planning to change this paper AZ104 here. AZ104. So when you're going for this course, you can say you have done AZ104 here. So in this course, we are learning here in this AZ103, in AZ104, we are the Microsoft Azure administrator. Our agenda, our job is what managing identities means managing the users active directory users groups user applications user services we are going to manage it and we are going to design the new policies right the user the azure service <clears throat> you can access from anywhere and the microsoft is having nearly 
more than 100 plus data centers in different different regions in different different countries so you have to apply some policies you have to apply example my administrator has to create the machines virtual machine in the cloud on in south india data center my user my junior admin has to create the storage accounts in west india data centers like this to which user you want to give the permissions like you want to give the delegation right to the users to your junior admins to manage the services you can design now we have a Azure administration, Azure administrator. In Azure administration, we are discussing here how to manage, how to deploy your accounts in Azure, how to give the subscription to the users here, how to give the different different rights to different different users. We will discuss. Then on premises, we are creating the network. The same network we are creating in the cloud, right? We are creating our on premises private network in the cloud. So in virtual networking class in Azure networking class in virtual networking class we'll discuss how to create virtual networks how to manage the IP addresses how to manage the public IP how to manage private IP in IP address we have two types assigning dynamic IP and static IP if you want static IP how to give the static IP to our computers how to <coughs> give the public IP to the machines to access over the internet we are going to discuss here and how to create the subnettings in our network we are going to discuss then we'll see here internet Intersite connectivity, how to connect virtual machines to virtual machine. If you deploy two, if you deploy two virtual networks, right? Example, VNet1, VNet2, 10 dot network and 192. If you want to communicate these two different networks, how? And if your networks are in two different locations, how to connect? Example, your servers are in, in the cloud, but your users are sitting in office. How to allow these office users to connect to the cloud servers? And how to allow the user to access by using VPNs? We have types of VPN site to site to site VPN, point to site VPN, and express route VPN. We are going to discuss here. In networking traffic manager, in networking traffic manager, we'll discuss load balancers. How to create the load balancers for our virtual machines, how to create the load balancer for our websites, how to create the load balancer for our applications, how to manage. Then in storage class, we are going to discuss <clears throat> how to create the storage in the server how to allow the user to access the storage there are different different types of storage out there we can create blob storage queue storage table storage and file storage if i'm going for file storage file storage basically share the, share the data within the organization we are sharing the data by using share folder by using ftp but over the internet how to allow the user to access this cloud data and how to go for the redundancy in case if one of the storage box in the microsoft data center one of the storage box is not working so sufficiently how to allow the user to access the same storage from other data center of Microsoft or other region data centers here, right? Then the main job of the administrator is what here? Managing your machines here. So on premises, we are creating the physical machines. We are making the physical machine like Active Directory Server, <clears throat> DNS Server, DHCP Server, Web Server, Virtualization, the virtual machines we are creating here, okay? The same servers i want to deploy in the cloud here right how to deploy your servers in the cloud and when you're creating the machines in the cloud that is called instance here and that instance are called virtual machines here so in the cloud in the microsoft data center how to create the virtual machines and how to manage this machine in this virtual machine how to manage the hard disk how to connect this motion machine to our private network in the cloud and how to assign the public ip to this machine how to manage the nac cards of this machine <coughs> And then we'll see if you want to add some extra hard disk one more hard disk i want to add some services in the virtual machines we are going to see how to add the virtual machines inside the virtual machine how to add the services like i want to install antivirus service i want to install some uh, monitoring tool services in this machine how we are going to install here and how these machines are connected physically to how these machines are connected to each other in the cloud how they are communicating and how to access this machine over the internet by using rdp how to enable the NSG rules also because when you're creating the machines by default all the ports are blocked so we can enable this port by using this network security group <clears throat> this is called firewall service right NSG in short you can say NSG so we'll see how to create a firewall rules for our virtual machines how to enable RTP right how to enable HTTP service we are going to discuss then we'll see here how to design serverless technology in the cloud and in virtual machine we can create the virtual machine by using three types one by using azure virtual machine then 
in virtual machine we want <coughs> redundancy false tolerance for example if one of when i'm creating a virtual machine in the cloud these machines are going to store in microsoft data center in one of the physical machine if that machine is not working or microsoft data center is not working then what then microsoft is saying you can go for availability set that is called high availability for using availability set how to create <coughs> virtual machines in the same data center if one of the server is down not working so you can automatically <coughs> so automatically the service will go to the next server to access here so how to create the load balancer for this machine and we have one more option here in high availability one is availability set when i'm deployed when i'm using availability set at least two virtual machines have to create and these two virtual machines are going to deploy in two different microsoft data center servers in two different physical servers in two different racks in two different fault domains in two different update domains in microsoft if one of the server is not working or switch is not working network switch so second server is available for you then we are going to see here how to configure load balances in this for this virtual machine then we'll see how to create vmss vm vmss service virtual machine skill set by using this vmss service i can create at a time thousands of virtual machines example 1000 virtual machine you want or at a time 100 machines you want with the same hardware with the same operating system with the same service you want we can deploy within some seconds because you can see over the internet these big companies like uh, flipkart amazon these companies are serving the services example this next sunday we have an offer here like 50 percent off is there so these companies will mention how many servers and how many users will connect to this service for example if this company is using five servers and at a time thousands of users are connecting to these five servers right and this five server is not enough so this company need more five servers so instantly how to deploy more five servers with the same hardware with the same operating system the same service by the help of vms service so by the help of vms service <coughs> we can deploy at a time more than two virtual machines maximum we can deploy thousand virtual machine here example i'm deploying 10 virtual machine but i want to run this 10 virtual machine at 24 by 7 no if i'm running 24 by 7 we have to pay more money to microsoft okay so i want to run two virtual machines now whenever the more queries are coming whenever the more request is coming automatically my machine has to increase my third machine should be on fourth machine or at a time all 10 machines should be on or next sunday i have an offer 50 percent off I'm doing on eBay, eBay business here, like, like Flipkart, like Amazon, I'm doing the business. So I want from morning seven o'clock to 10 p.m. My all 10 machines should be on, right? But after 10 o'clock, automatically all eight machines should be off, only two virtual machines should be run there, okay? So this auto scaling feature we want here. So this auto scaling, we can configure by using Azure VMS service, right? And we have serverless computing because we are not using physical servers in our on-premises. We are creating these servers these services in the cloud here okay and data protection also is there. whatever data you're transferring over the internet to your on-premises through the end users this data is protected encrypted then we have a monitoring we have to know that my machines are working properly or not if any problem is there maybe hardware issue is there application is there in connectivity issues there so by using monitoring tools we can do the monitoring and we can configure the alerts also because as administrator i will not sit in front of the server 24 by 7 to do monitoring here so whenever anything is happened here, so automatically I have to get one alert message or alert mail I have to get in my account so that monitoring tools also be configured. So in this course, you can say AZ103. Now upcoming paper is what here, right? This paper in upcoming feature, the paper name is changing what AZ104. And once you do this course, so you can say yourself as a Microsoft Azure administrator. Okay. Now the microservice is saying here, the microservice is a cloud provider. The microservice over here is a cloud provider, right? Like Amazon is a cloud provider. Amazon, Microsoft, is a cloud provider. Google is also a cloud provider. IBM is a cloud provider. Salesforce is there. There are so many companies out there who is giving this service. And almost these companies are giving the same services. But Microsoft started their career <coughs> in the year of 2010. But that time the public is not aware about this service then microsoft started actual their business from 2014 right so in the market the amazon started their service in the year of 2016 sorry 2006 year in the year of 2006 they started the business so amazon is a very old player in this market but when the microservice came in the market right 
So Microsoft is leading to all these companies, right? Because Microsoft is promising to every customer. Our services are friendly services. Our services are what here? Friendly services. <clears throat> and when I'm teaching this course, last two years back, really, if you believe or not, the Microsoft is having nearly only less than 18 data centers. How many? 18. 18 data centers. But now you can observe here the Microsoft is in how many data centers here. <clears throat> the Microsoft is having nearly now in the market. The Microsoft is having nearly in 140 countries. You can see the chart here. In 140 countries, Microsoft is having regions. In 160 plus regions, or 60 plus regions, in 140 countries, Microsoft is having their own data centers. So are you finding blue color balls here? These blue color balls are the Microsoft data centers. Now you can see here, if you're in US, there are so many data centers out there in US. If you are in Middle East, you have a data center in Middle East also. You are in, if you're in Europe, if you are in Germany, there are so many data centers out there. If you are in India also, India now is having three data centers, South India, Central India, and West India we have, right? So the Microsoft is saying nearest to your region, if your business in South India, so which is the nearest region, you can deploy your servers in that region and you can configure. But it's not restricted. You can deploy your servers. You are sitting in Hyderabad in India exam, <coughs> but you want to configure your web server in Central USA. Yes, you can configure. There is no restriction. You can configure here. Configure your services in Central USA. There is allowed. There is no restriction here, right? And all these regions are peer to each other. All these regions are peer. Microsoft is having their own networking. These data centers are connected physically to each every. But what data center contain? Data center contain what here? Physical servers, which is storage boxes, services, load balancer services is available. So just what we are doing, we are accessing these services and we are paying the rent. Right? Whenever we don't want, remove this service, right? You don't need to pay any extra money to the Microsoft here. And you can see this network is a global network. This network is what here? Global network infrastructure of Microsoft. And you can see in region two example here, the Microsoft is having one data center. Okay, so as with my VM is available here, right side data center, right? But here, when I'm deploying my VM here, right? So my VM is running. So in case if this data center is down, we don't need to worry. You can find the same VM in next data center in the same region, right? But in some regions, Microsoft is having one data center. In some regions, Microsoft is having more than one data center. You can see in region one, we have three data center. Data center one, that is called zone one. Data center two, that is called zone two. Data center three is called zone three. And this is called availability options. It's called high availability. So example, my in region one, I have deployed my storage here with my VMs here, where in data center one, that is called zone one. In case in future, maybe some disaster problems are there, like zone one data center is totally down there is no power supply there is no uh servers are available here so i can find the same services in region two or in region three so my users also can access but in case if the region one total is down this region is down maybe some floods are there earthquake is there some natural disaster problems are there if this region one all data center is down you can find the same services in region two also so you can allow the user to access this from the region two so the microservicing, all the regions are peer to each other, connected to each other. If one of the data center is down, you don't need to worry, you can access the services from other Microsoft data centers, okay, this one. And you can observe here, the Microsoft is very famous company because Microsoft is having SLA, service level agreement is very good. And all the services configuring is very good, right? And all the services we can configure by using graphical. That's why the Microsoft, the people, 95% people in the world like to Microsoft. And the Microsoft now is becoming a leader in the market, is leading to all these companies, is giving the best service. And almost all these uh, cloud providers like Amazon, Google, IBM is giving the same service to you, right? But Microsoft is giving what thing here? Everything Microsoft licensing, Microsoft pricing is easy for everyone here. Okay, so that's why the company side. So if anyone is asking this question, what is Microsoft Azure? So you have to say Microsoft Azure. Previously, it's called Windows Azure. It's called what here? Windows. But now, Microsoft is called, this service called Microsoft Azure. It's a cloud computing service created by Microsoft for building, testing, deploying, and managing application services through a global network of Microsoft managed data center. Okay, we can access these services. But when I'm going to this Microsoft Azure, actually, 
So I have, I'm learning actual cloud here. I'm learning what here? Cloud. Now, if anyone is asking, sir, what is the benefit of this cloud? So if anyone is asking, what is the benefit of this cloud? So we have to learn something is called cloud here. So in cloud computing, you can observe here, we have two options. One is service model. One is called deployment model. In service model, we have three options. One is called software as a service. Software as a service means, yes, <clears throat> we need a software, right? We need, need a software, right? We need a software, right? By the help of this software, we want to access services. So example, Office 365 is a big example big for software as a service. Just all the software are there. Just we have to go there and create the account and access the services, right? Access the services, right? That is called software as a service. In platform as a service, we are deploying our application here. We are getting network, OS, everything is available. Just we are going and we are configuring the our application. We are configuring our application, our own application, right? And allowing the user to access here. We are testing the application. But in infrastructure as a service, we are the administrator. We are deciding what type of hardware I need, what operating system I need, right? And which type of server I need. And in that, right, what IP I need, right? What services I need. I'm deploying according to my request, I'm deploying the service. So I'm using the hardware of the cloud provider. I'm designing my own application. So it means after the course is completed, you can say you are working on infrastructure as a service we are managing here, right? And in the cloud deployment, we have types of clouds here. So you can see here, public cloud is there, private is there, hybrid cloud is there. What is public cloud is open for everyone. Like when I'm accessing Microsoft Azure, Amazon, this is called public cloud providers, right? And this cloud in this cloud providers, right? <coughs> I'm deploying my machines there. I'm deploying my services. I'm deploying my storage. I'm allowing myself to admin or my users to access these services over the internet. Just we require public internet connectivity in our machines. We can access. So anyone can access. Which you having permissions, you can access here. Okay, that's called what here? Public cloud. Now, what is private cloud? Private cloud we are creating in our organization. In our organization, in our organization, right? In our company, in our organization, we are creating our own <coughs> network, our own private network, you can say. So if I'm creating my own private network in my organization, right? That is called what here? Private cloud. And who can access this private cloud? Only my private users, my domain users, or which user is having permission to access over the internet. Only that user can access. This is belongs to a single organization. Okay. This is what private cloud. Now hybrid cloud means what here? <clears throat> I have private cloud also and public cloud. Right? I'm allowing my users to access both clouds. So example, on premises. I designed the private cloud. Right? At the same time, I'm using public cloud. I have some servers in the public cloud, Microsoft Azure. Right? I'm allowing my administrator or I'm allowing my users to access these both clouds. So my user can access private cloud also. My user also can access public cloud. So this cloud is called combination of private and public cloud. It's called what here? A hybrid cloud here. Okay, this is a mixed environment. On-premises and the public cloud is a mixed environment here. Now the question is what? Why the companies are moving to the Azure, right? So Azure is a Microsoft service. And is a cloud service here by the help of that we can access microsoft data center services here now these are the reasons why the companies are moving to the cloud the first reason is what compared to the other organization like amazon compared to the google the microsoft is giving the pricing is five times cheaper than aws or google or ibm so that's why this is what and the microsoft having their own products you can see here most of the companies in the market, 95% of the companies are individual users. 800 first fortune companies are trusting on Microsoft and Microsoft is having their own operating system license. Aren't they? If you're purchasing something from Microsoft, Microsoft will give you extra discount also to you, right? So licensing also is there. So saving the, through the existing Microsoft license. Example, you have already operating system license and you want to create a virtual machine in the cloud, but you want to use this operating system. Microsoft is saying, yes, if you have already licensed, you don't need to pay the money. So first, Microsoft is saying here, example, if you deploy a virtual machine in Microsoft by using Microsoft Azure service, 
or you're deploying one version machine by using AWS. So AWS and microservicing pay $10 per hour. How many dollars? $10. But what microservicing, when you're deploying version machine, give less than five times less for the companies. Five times less means to Microsoft Azure. How much dollars we have to pay? Only five dollars, right? Only five dollars, right? We have to pay. And here the thing is what? A microservicing, you have to go for pay as you go. Pay as you go service. Means pay as you go means what here? How many hours you have, you're using this service that much? How many hours you're using this virtual machine or service? You have to pay that much. So example, I deploy a virtual machine. I'm using only for 15 minutes. So it means I no need to pay this $5 also. Just we have to pay 15 minutes. Or if I'm deploying one service, I'm using for half an hour. So we have to pay only $2.5 here. We no need to pay the $5. So this is Microsoft. So Microsoft is making the pricing is easy for us, this one. And if I'm going for reserve virtual machines, Microsoft is having reserve machines, reserve services. If I'm saying I want to use this virtual machine for one year, so Microsoft will give you more 30% discount. If I'm saying I want to use this service for three years, Microsoft is saying yes, you have more discount for that, right? So this type of service Microsoft is giving to you. So Microsoft is saving the money for your existing license also and for your pricing. And more than 95% of the uh, first fortune, right? 500 companies are trusting on Microsoft services here because Microsoft certification support. Main thing is what support? Microsoft support is very easy here. When you call, the Microsoft will give the set and documentation, right? Preparation of the design network is very easy for, for Microsoft. So that's why the companies are going to Microsoft. So Microsoft Azure service is a cloud provider service owned by Microsoft, managed by Microsoft. Is offer various services in the cloud such as computers, storage, database, various other domains also. It has a pay-as-you-go model, right? And how many hours, how many minutes we are using, we can pay that amount. And in second large <coughs> cloud providers in the market. Why I'm saying second large, not first year? Because my, Amazon started their business in 2006 year. So I cannot say Microsoft is the first one because Microsoft started their services using the companies are using service from 2014. That's why I'm saying, but I remember here, Microsoft is giving the great competition to these companies now. Started their business from last four years only or five years only, but these companies, Microsoft is giving great competition to these companies here, one. So next is what Microsoft is having their own architecture here. So you can here, you can observe here in Microsoft. If you want to micro, access the Microsoft services, you want to deploy, you have to go for this service model that is called Azure Resource Manager mode. Through that, our authentication, account authentication has done here, okay? Then we can access the service database, web applications, virtual machine, service management. We can access other so many services are there. We have nearly 100 per services are there. We can access. But how to access these services? By using website. And that website is called what here? Portal. By portal. Or we can access by PowerShell also. Or we can access by through command also, right? We have. Or you can access by uh rest clients here rest client means our company has designed own application in this application we can through this application directly we can connect to the microsoft website to portal page to access this service we can deploy here okay so there are so many options are available if anyone is saying i want to work on powershell through powershell i want to manage microsoft yes you can manage through cli you want to manage yes you can manage right and through microsoft portal website yes you can manage we have this many options are available by the help of that, you can connect to the Microsoft data center. You can access the services. So in this course, I will teach you how to create a Microsoft free account because when I'm going for the learning stage in the beginner, I will not pay to anything to Microsoft. So how to create a free account in Microsoft, how to create the account and how to access Microsoft data center by using portal graphical by using powershell by using cli we are going to see here now i will show you one small configuration here so as you meant my company is deciding to create a, a virtual machine in microsoft data center so i am deciding to go to cloud uh, azure cloud service i want to use the microsoft azure cloud service then so first we have to create one account in azure okay we need one account so we have to sign up so here i want to deploy one virtual machine so in the microsoft cloud 
So I want to deploy one virtual machine here, right? So I will show you here how to deploy a virtual machine in the cloud here. But we are sitting in our office. We are sitting in our office in our on premises, right? So as an administrator, I'm sitting in my office in my organization by using my laptop or desktop as administrator. First, I will connect to the Microsoft data center. <clears throat> then I will deploy one virtual machine. In this virtual machine, I can run any operating system. So I can run, there are so many operating systems out there. You can run Microsoft Windows Server OS or Windows 10 also in 2016 also. And if you love with the Linux, if you're the Linux administrator, Microsoft is saying, yes, this is for you. You can connect through Linux. You can create design the Linux virtual machines also. We have an option here, right? So we can connect, we can access the services. So I will show you by using Microsoft portal page that is called portal.azure.com, right? By the help of this portal page, right? Microsoft website is their portal page website. How to connect to the our account to our data center, right? To our account, Microsoft account, and how to create the virtual machine. So we have to open our browser. In the browser, we have to type here portal.azure.com and hit enter. Now it's asking your login credentials. So this is my login credential in account and my password. I have to type to so login. So you can see successfully I'm logging to my account, Azure account. Okay, so this is called Microsoft Portal page here. So here I want to create a virtual machine. So if you want to create a virtual machine here, on the screen you can find virtual machine. If it is not there, you can go to the menu page here. You can find in the list here. You have option, virtual machine. There are so many are there. You can go for resource group, app services, function application, SQL database. Cosmo TV, you can go for virtual machine, load balancers, storage, virtual network, active directory, monitoring. There are so many tools are available. And one more thing that is called Azure Site Recovery Service. I found it. By using Azure Site Recovery Service, if you have some servers on premises, example, you have already existing servers in on premises, and you want to migrate the server to the cloud, your boss is saying, I want the same server, same service in the cloud. Right? So we can migrate our on premises server to cloud. And in Microsoft, Microsoft has given backup service also. By using this site recovery service, I can do two things. I can migrate my on-premises server to the cloud, one. And the second thing, we can go for backup also. For example, my on-premises, I have uh, servers. That server hard disk backup I want to take in the cloud. I want to take a drive backup. I want to take that folder backup. I want to take the file backup. That also we can deploy here, okay? So here, <clears throat> I'm deploying one virtual machine. So you can see here, I'm going to the Azure virtual machines option. So it's very simple. Everything is very simple here. Just you have to know the method and procedure to deploy the system in the cloud. So this is open. Already I created two virtual machines here. One is web server one. One is a web server two here. So I want to deploy one more machine here. So click on add. So once you click add here, your page is opening here. Through this page, I can deploy my virtual machine. This is practical, very simple here. There are so many options asking here, but just I'm going for basics option. First is asking my account that is called subscription. This is my subscription that is asking in which resource group you want to create. I want to create in resource group one, project one here. Then is asking here, and what is the resource group also we are going to learn in the Cloud because before creating anything in the cloud, in Azure, we require resource group that we have to create. Then your machine name, example, I'm doing my machine name. You can give any name that is virtual machine one in which region you want to create. There are 104 regions out there. Select any one. I'm selecting West Europe here. Then availability set is used for high availability. Then it's asking image. Image means operating system. By default, Oven2 is there. If you want to change, you can track, you can change your operating system. You can go for Red Hat Linux, CentOS, Oracle Linux, 
Ubuntu, you can go for Windows 2019, 2016, 2012 operating system. You have so I'm selecting Windows Server 2012 R2 data center. Then he's asking, sir, hardware you want. So Microsoft is suggesting by default this hardware. Size means your hardware. So machine name and Microsoft is having 100 plus sizes of virtual machine here. So this virtual machine hardware size is what? DS1, V2 version 2, and one virtual processor is there 3.5 GB memory is using here. And this per month, we have to pay this much amount here. This is called per month, but you can calculate per minute also you can pay them out. If you want to change the size, you have option. Then he's asking log on name. By default, it's giving Azure user, but I want to give my own name. So my own name is what? Zoom admin example. Then password. Password is compulsory. Password minimum should be 12 to 123 characters and complexity password we want here. So two times we have to type our password. Right? And if you come down, how are you going to access this machine? By default, one port is enabled. That is called NSG port, RDP port is enabled, 3389. So through this port, I can access, but I want other ports should be enabled. So other ports, you can enable HTTP, HTTPS, and for Linux machines, you can go for SSH port enable. So I want these two ports, HTTP and RDP. These two ports is enabled for me. The next very important, you have to check this is connected to which network. So if you go to the networking here, <coughs> in networking, created one network by the name of V network, and it's going to change the IP from V network. So V network subnet is 10 dot slash 24. And this machine is getting one public IP also. And one firewall rule is creating, NSG rule is creating here for RDP for HTTP. Right? Then go to the monitoring. In by default, monitoring is enabled. You can monitoring, right? Or you can disable the monitoring now. In future, when you want, you can enable the monitoring here. So you can find your monitoring. Full technos monitoring is on. So you can off it whenever you want, you can enable. Now in advanced services, like you want to add extension services, you want to add antivirus service with operating system, you want to add monitoring tools. Yes, you can add this option is there. Now tags, we can apply for searching the names. For, for name purpose, we can apply the tags here. If you want to add one more hard disk, you can go to the disk. By default, you can see your machine is getting one operating system disk. So this disk. And if you want to add extra hard disk, yes, you can add. That's called what here, adding extra virtual, attach one new disk, you can attach it. But your machine is getting one new hard disk, and that is what SSD premium. Premium SSD hard disk you get. Go to the it will give you the configuration and it will give you the pricing also. How much price we are going to pay per hour here. So example, per hour here, I'm going to pay this much amount, 8.79 Indian rupees I'm going to pay here. And my complete configuration is available in the bottom here. Okay, just click on create. So once you click create, my validation is done, click on create. It will take at least four minutes, right, to deploy the Once your deployment is completed, you will get one message here. Successfully, virtual machine is deployed. So you can observe now the successfully the virtual machine is deployed. It's taken hardly three of three minutes to deploy the service. Now you can go back to the home page and open the virtual machine. If you the virtual machine, you can find your virtual machine is successfully deployed and status is running in West Europe region. Resource group is this one. And if you open the virtual machine, you can check. Can observe here this virtual machine is having to control OS is hardware and this is a public IP by using this public IP you can access 
and this virtual machine is having one private IP also. You can observe here in the here it is showing in networking. This virtual machine now is having a private IP that is 10.0.0.6. And this virtual machine public IP is what here? This is what you by using this public IP you can access. And this is VNet from this VNet this machine has taken. So like this, <clears throat> I deploy two more machines here. One is web server one, web server two. So I want to create this machine as a web server here. So I'm opening this web server home. How to add machine over the internet. So the web server one. You can observe here, this is a public IP. So copy this public IP, right? Now go to your machine. This is your machine. Open RDC, remote desktop connection. You have to type MSDSC in the run, in your laptop, in your desktop. You have to type MSDSC, click OK. It's asking the public IP, click the public IP and click on connect. So once you click connect here, then it's asking your virtual machine credential. That is, uh, name is Zoom admin, password. That machine you have to click and click OK. <coughs> click on Yes. <coughs> now you can see successfully your access in this machine. <coughs> now I want to configure this machine as a, a web server. So to configure this machine as a web server, we have to host one. First, we have to install IS service, then we have to host one website here. So this is my cloud machine I'm accessing over the internet. <clears throat> now, if you want to install IS service, so we have to open the server manager console. Now here, IS service is not installed. Click on add roles and features here. So we have to click on this add and features. Just click next, 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 and check this box here. If you come down in roles, you have web server eyes. Check this box, click on add features, then click on next, 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 install. It will take two or three minutes to deploy this service, to install this service. Just wait. So you can observe on the screen here, my IS service is successfully installed. I want to create a website. So I want to use the default website to create the HTTP site here. So close this window. Now open the in the tools, open the IS Internet Information Service. Right, and here. <clears throat> so this is my web server one. Expand this web server one. And we have a default site here. Here already we have. So if you browse this page, you will get like this like this page you will get okay so i will do some modification in this page here to access here so this is example my company website i want to do some modification to understand i'm working on which i'm accessing this service from which web server because if you have multiple servers then i have to understand for our purpose we are doing so i will modify this page here <coughs> So I will keep my on the website. I will keep my company. Uh, I will keep my web server name so I can understand. I'm getting the reply. My users are getting the reply from which web server. If one web server is down, we have to get the reply from other web server here. So I'm giving the name here, uh, web server one. Okay. So save this file. Now close this. Now when you refresh the website, close this one. When you refresh the website, so you can observe here if I refresh. So we're getting reply from web server. So like this, I created one more web server, web server two. I hosted the same website here. This way I have multiple web servers. So this is my web server two. You can observe here, I'm using the same operating system. I already installed IS service here. So in this IS service, uh, I created one website here. That is 
my website this is my same website i hosted here but this is from web server here. so you can observe here same page i'm using but this is my <coughs> web server too but why i created two machines here because example my company is doing eBay business so whenever my users are accessing here for example my first user accessing website so the users request my first user when the user accessing the website the first user request will go to which web server so example a uh, system one web server we have a system two web server system three web server we have three web server i hosted same website example xyz.com so the first user request will go to first server now second user request will go to second web server third user will request go to third web server okay now tell me the fourth user request will go to which server please tell me fourth user request will go to system one server okay fine like this <clears throat> but in case if the web server one is down then user one and user four cannot access the website okay but what i want if one of the web server is down i want the request has to go to other web server so that's why <coughs> here i have to create one azure load balancer service so if i configure azure load balancer service and connect all these three servers to this load balancer okay and the load balancer is connected to internet by using a public IP and this is called front-end public IP okay so this is called Azure load balancing so Azure load balancing will have a good knowledge how to redistribute the traffic redistribute the traffic from one host to other host so example if the web server one is down <coughs> automatically the Azure load balancer will detect so your user one still can access the website from web server 3 and user 4 request will go to web server 2 still user can access here okay so I will show you a small demo here, right? How to create the load balancer here. So I have already created my two virtual machines here, web server one, web server two. In this I want. So if you want to load balancer, go to the home page. <coughs> and go to the portal and create the load balance. So if you open the load balancer, the load balance open for you and create the load balancer account first. So click on add option. So click on add up here so he's asking the load balancer so you can observe here is asking load balancer is open is asking which resource group you want to create that is rsg project one and load balancer name i'm giving here a uh, web server dash lb is web server load balancer in west europe it should be connected to public network sku stock keeping unit basic and public ip yes i need public ip and give the name here the web lb public ip and this public ip will give by microsoft then ip should be static on the load balancer always here right so keep that ip should be what here static on the load balancer <clears throat> then click on view plus create and click on create so your load balancer is going to create here it's deploying the service now we have to wait for a few minutes now service is successfully deployed <clears throat> now we have to open the load balancer we have to attach the number of machines on one in this load balancer that many machines you have to attach like i created two or three or four that we have to attach so open this web server we have to go to the backend tools okay so we have to go to the backend tools here Now click on to add the number of machines in this load balance so here is asking the load balancer name here <clears throat> you can give any name here so i'm giving the name here uh, back in <coughs> servers okay give any name it will accept 
then to which network is connected v net one ipv4 associated to what here virtual machines correct virtual machine then which virtual machine was run so we got add option and the like these two virtual machines web server one and web server two click on add things are adding okay then click on <coughs> add once you click add these machines are added to this So you can observe here now my two virtual machines are attached to my backend pools here. Now we have to create health probe also and load balancer rules also we have to create. So we have to create the health probe here. In health probe here, we have to add <clears throat> the health probe name and which protocol we are using and port number, interval, and how many seconds you want to fail over, fail you want to give. So click on OK. So health probe is created here. Then after that help probe is done, go to the load balancer rules here. So in load balancer rules here, we have to create, it is updating, just wait, click on add, then give the name, rule one, and port should be what here, 80, I want to attach. Then here, <coughs> you can set here, or uh, session timeout, you can set here, then click on OK. So once you click OK, your load balancer rule is created. Now come to the, <laughs> load balancer public IP because we are accessing all this machine by using load balancer public IP. So the load balancer public IP address you can observe here this one. I'm going to access these two machines by using this load balancer public IP. Now we have to go to the browser, right? Open the browser and type the load balancer public IP. This is the public IP. Hit enter and check you are getting reply from which web server. So if I hit enter, you can observe here I'm getting the reply from web server one. I'm accessing this website over the internet. You also can access this website over the internet. So what I will do, I will go to the my portal page. I will stop the web server one. Then I will check whether we are getting the replies from web server two or not. Then load balance is working. So I will go to my server portal page. I'm stopping one the website, web server one. I'm stopping, stop this, say yes. So it is stopped here. Now after stopping here, it will take a few minutes. After stopping, wait for five seconds or total 10 seconds, then again, uh, access the same website, right? Access this website by this public IP that is 51.143.11.209. Hit enter. Now check this time you're getting reply from which web server? You're getting reply from web server 2. So it means if the web server 1 is down, you're getting the reply from web server 2 here. Okay, guys. So if one of the web server is down, the next web server is available for you to access. This is called Azure Load Balancing. Okay. So there are so many topics out there we are going to cover in this session, right? Now once you join. So I hope this class is informative for you, right? You have done something. So see you in the Azure classes. Bye, everyone.